our Bibles and let's go to the book of Job. I'm going to preach on the home for a little bit today. And uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer and ask God to help us and bless our time. Father, thank you so much for our church. Thank you for all that you're doing in our lives. And we thank you for the message this morning. We pray, Lord, that you lead us now as we look at the man named Job and uh, the principles you have for us. I pray, Father, you'd be pleased. I pray you have your will in our lives and you'd be glorified in the message. We ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Notice, if you would, uh, Job verse 1, uh, Job chapter 1, verse 1. So the Bible says, There was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job. And that man was perfect and upright and one that feared God and eschewed evil. He was a great man, Amen. Job was. And, you know, the devil, we'll get to this in a little bit, but the devil's so wicked and mean and rotten, and uh, that's a good thing about him. But uh, he attacks Job, and uh, God uh, asks Job if he could, if he considered his, his servant uh, Job. And... Um, you know, uh, I, I think it was a, a good thing that he did that because he put the best up against the devil. And then notice verse 2, and there went, uh, were born unto him seven sons and three daughters. Uh, his substance was 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 yoke of oxen, 500 she-asses, and very great household, so that this man was the greatest of all the men of the East. And then notice chapter uh, 1, verse 6. The Bible says, Then there, uh, uh, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in all the earth, and a perfect, unjust, upright man, one that feareth God and sheweth evil? And then, the, uh, then Satan answered the Lord and said, Doth Job fear God for naught? Hast thou made a hedge about him, and about his house, and about, about all that he, uh, he hath on every side? Thou hast blessed the work of his hand, and his substance uh, is increased in the land. But put forth thine hand now, and touch all that he hath, and he'll curse thee to thy face. Now, I'll tell you something. The devil's evil. He's so wicked to talk to God that way. But he's going to have his comeuppance. The day's coming, he's going to go to the lake of fire. And verse 12, And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he hath is in thy power. Uh, only... Uh, upon himself, put not thy, put not forth thine hand. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. And then pick up in chapter two, verse one. Again, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them to present himself before the Lord. And the Lord said unto Satan, From whence comest thou? And Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth and from walking up and down in it. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, perfect, upright man, and one that feareth God, and sheweth evil? And still he holdeth fast his integrity, although, uh, although thou uh, movest uh, me uh, against him, to destroy him from uh, without a cause. And Satan said, The Lord... Uh, and, and said, uh, skin for skin, yea, all that a man hath will he give for his life. That, uh, but put forth thine hand now, and touch his bone and flesh, and I'll curse thee thy face. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, he is in thy hand, but save his life. Thank you, may be seated. So uh, this, this is a, a, the first book that was written, is the book of Job. And uh, the Christian life is a battle uh, between truth and, and lies, between righteousness and unrighteousness, uh, good and evil. And uh, 
So we see that uh, the kingdom of light and kingdom of darkness. And the Bible describes our life as a war, as a battle, as a, um, a warfare, wrestling, fighting, etc. And we are called soldiers. Uh, we're to wear the whole armor of God. And the devil hath declared war uh, on God and his creation. And think about the, uh, Satan's attitude here. He said, you know, curse you to your face. And here was a man who loved God. He was a man who shewed evil. He was upright and so on. And, uh, and he said, oh, Job is going to curse you to your face. I mean, just evil, just rotten. And that's the, Satan's mindset. So we're not in a, we're not in a uh, shoving mash, and not a squirmish, but a war. That's what the Bible says. We're in a war, and the devil's a busy devil. Notice chapter 2 and verse 2. And the Lord said unto Satan, from whence comest thou? And Satan answered the Lord and said, from going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. That's the devil. And the devil's real. He's not some make-believe character. He's, he's evil. If he have his, his way, he would, uh, as the Bible says, uh, sift you as wheat. And that's what the Bible says that he wanted to do to Peter. But Jesus said, I prayed for you. And uh, that's good that God prays for us. Amen? Amen. And uh, so we see the devil is a busy devil. He, he's a bother devil. And the devil has no peace. Notice you would in chapter 12 of Revelation, chapter 12, and uh, notice uh, verse 12. Chapter 12 and verse 12. Revelation 12, 12, the Bible says, Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Um, woe to the inhabitants of the earth and, the, 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 uh, and, the, and the, of the seal, for the devil is come down from unto you having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. So he has no peace. Notice that he would... Chapter 4, 1 first, first John, first John uh, chapter 4, and verse 4. And the Bible says, Ye have God, little children, and have overcome them, because great is, he, uh, great is he that is in you than he that is in the world. So greater is the Holy Spirit in us than Satan in the world. And then notice chapter 8 of Romans, chapter 8, and we see in verse... 31, and the Bible tells us here, and this is a great portion of Scripture. He said, what shall we uh, then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? And that's very important that we believe that, and we have that mindset, we hide that in our hearts, because if God's for us, who can be against us? Amen. I mean, honestly, who can, who can stand against God? And uh, then he says in verse 32, He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not uh, with him also freely give us all things? And, and then notice verse 37, Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. So the attack upon mankind is an uh, attack against the home. And it's fivefold. We see that uh, Satan attacks the flesh, he attacks finances, he attacks faith, he attacks friends, he attacks family. In Job chapter 1, verse 8, let's go there, please. Job chapter 1, verse 8, and uh, notice, if you would, in verse 8, And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect upright man, one that feareth God and escheweth evil. And the, the Bible tells us when God gave Satan permission, um, he immediately attacks uh, Job. Immediately. So when you see the word uh, in chapter, eight, uh, chapter 1, verse 8, consider, it means to mark, to target. Uh, the devil's plan is to attack us in different areas. And that's the way Satan is. And where is he going to attack you? At your best. 
And uh, I, I say that because, you know, Job was a, a man of faith. He, he attacked the faith. He's a man who uh, had flesh, finances. He took all his finances away. His family he took his family away. And his friends, they were not good friends. They, they found nothing but fault with Job. So we have to understand when we see the devil working, and I can't say that we're attacked every day, but many times Satan attacks us. And why? Because he wants to destroy us. And again, he said to, uh, Jesus said to Peter, Satan wants to sift you as wheat. So Job was uh, accused uh, by the devil. And Satan has weak character. If God didn't bless Job, he, he wouldn't serve God. That's not true. You know, God was good to Job. He was. He blessed him greatly. But even if he didn't bless him, I think Job would serve God. And then he had wicked character. Job, was, uh, uh, Job just uh, uses God, and he doesn't love God, which is not true. Job loved God with all his heart. There's a portion here where Job made an offering for his children who were socializing. He made an offering just in case uh, they were not uh, doing God's will. So Satan has used these five areas to attack us since the beginning of time. So let's go to Genesis chapter 3, please. Genesis chapter 3, and we'll see where Satan attacked uh, Adam and Eve. Uh, in the garden. All right. So notice Genesis chapter 3. We pick up in verse 1. Now the serpent was more subtle. We saw that this morning about that woman, the, the, uh, the uh, woman dressed like a, a harlot. Uh, she was subtle. And uh, then, the, uh, then, any, then any beast of the field which the Lord God had made, and he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said... If uh, you shall not eat of every tree of the garden, so the the faith is attacked, and uh, the questions asked, hath God said? So that's important, and uh, Satan is going to attack your faith. You know, hath God said? Did God promise this to you? What we just read in Romans chapter eight, you know, the promises of God. So we have to consider that, and uh, the thing is, you don't want to doubt God. You can stand on the Word of God. I mean this with all my heart. You can stand on the Word of God, and God's Word is true. God's going to come through if you stand on the Word of God. And then second of all, notice he attacks the flesh. The Bible says in verse 6 of chapter 3 of Genesis, And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and it's pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took the fruit thereof, and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. So Adam knew, he, he knew that it was wrong. He conscious, uh, conscientiously had partaken of the fruit and deliberately ate. So uh, the Bible tells us he attacks a flesh. And uh, he does so, why? For food. So may I say this? My wife has said this many times. It's just one meal. You know, people are going to have cows over the food not being exactly the way it should be. You know, people can just have a conniption and, uh, because the food's not right. But it's just a meal. It really is. I know that's important to you, but it's just a meal. So you'll eat another one. So the thing is this, is that so many times we complain, but, you know, it, God, we, we shouldn't complain because we shouldn't murmur because God, you know, uh, is going to take care of the flesh. And then notice the finance in the verse 6, again speaking about this good for food, uh, it's going to make one wise. So there's a benefit there if she part had partaken of, of the fruit. But the problem was God said, don't do it. And then notice the family. She gave it to her husband in verse 6. 
and he ate. And uh, notice verse 1, uh, this friends. So now the serpent is more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made and said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden. So he did not re expect the serpent to misguide her. So it was a, a friend or association. She must have felt comfortable enough to communicate with the serpent. So this is the way the devil attacks. And it could be someone you think is your friend. And, uh, but he, he's going to attack you. He'll use whatever he has to. And then notice chapter 4, Matthew. Again, we see this uh, uh, you know, practice uh, uh, again in Matthew chapter 4. And notice uh, verse 4. I'm sorry, 4 and verse 9, rather. We see where Satan attacks uh, faith in verse 9. The Bible says, And he said unto him, All, that, all the things will I give thee, that thou shalt fall down and worship. So now Jesus is being tempted by the devil. And here, now I want you to understand this. I, I've said this different times. But Satan was a created being. And he worshipped Jesus Christ in eternity. And he said, if you bow down and worship me, he said, we'll be fine. We'll, we'll, uh. So he attacks the faith. Notice verse 3 of Matthew chapter 4. Bible says, and when the tempter came to him, he said, if thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. So he's relentless in his temptation. And uh, the if thou be the Son of God. He knew what he was. He knew exactly who he was. And then verse 8. You see, and again, the devil taken him up into an exceeding high mountain and showed him all the kings of the earth and uh, the glory of them. So he attacks the finances or the wealth. And you know, Jesus said in verse um, uh, 9, and say, all these things will I give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me. So we see in verse 6 uh, of chapter 4, uh, and he said unto him, if thou be the son of God, again, questioning whether he was the son of God or not, which he knew better, cast thyself down, for it is, it is written, he shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in, thy hand, in their hand uh, I shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou, uh, thou darest thy foot against the stone. So again, he, you know, he's questioning uh, the angels. Uh, are they going to come to your rescue? Is God going to take care of you? And, and etc. And so we see that today we're going to look at the the devil's attack with the flesh. Let's go back to Job chapter 2. Job chapter 2. And uh, we'll pick up there in verse 7. All right, verse 7. And so when Satan uh, forth from the presence of the Lord and smote Job with uh, sore boils from the sole of his foot unto the crown. So the flesh of Satan uh, is a beachhead. And so think about when World War II, Normandy was where we attacked. And uh, it was a beachhead during World War II. And I don't know if you saw the movie. Um, anyway. Um, what? One more time. The longest day. Yeah. The, the attack on, on Normandy was, I mean, uh, there's so many of our, our people just perished because it was a slaughter. But Americans pushed through because God's blessing was on our country. And um, so man is made of flesh, body, uh, the world consciousness. So we have five senses. We have sight, hearing, smelling, touching and tasting. And that's the flesh, the body. And the soul is, uh, we have sin consciousness or self-awareness. There's emotions, heart, uh, mind, decision-making process. And the spirit 
could be the Holy Spirit or evil spirits, the human spirit. Uh, God consciousness uh, made alive at salvation. So we, we see that God has uh, blessed us uh, with uh, three parts, the body, the soul, and spirit. Now the flesh is the worldly nature, and it's known as the flesh in contrast to the spirit. And God uh, hates the sinful flesh. He, he cannot uh, abide by it. it its nature is, is wrong. And so let's go to Romans chapter 8, please. Romans chapter 8. And uh, we'll pick up here in verse 3. Romans chapter 8 and verse 3. And so the Bible tells us in verse 3, for what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God sent his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh. So God uh, sent his son and cost his son his life. But notice verse 7 and 8. The Bible says, because the carnal mind is enmity against God. In other words, the carnal mind is against the Lord. It's, it, it, it's an enemy of God. For it's not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So that's the problem. And and as much as people come to church and they they've never been born again by the Spirit, the Bible says you know they're they're not subject to the law of God, neither they can be. And the flesh always burns out, always burns out. Right. You you may have a good standard when it comes to dress or music or you know lifestyle and so on, but it's going to burn out after a while. And then the Bible says verse eight, so then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. So it doesn't matter how faithful you are if you come to church, and I, I thank you for coming, but the, the idea is that, you know, you cannot please God by just coming to church. You know, God wants us to be born again. God wants us to be saved. God wants us redeemed. God wants us converted. Because you cannot live for Christ without God owning your heart. And uh, that's the key. He's, he's gotta, you got to uh, have Christ uh, convert your heart. Now let's go to John chapter 6, please. John chapter 6. And we pick it up here in verse 63. So the whole chapter is dealing with um, uh, the flesh and the spirit. And he says in Chapter 6, verse 63, if the, it is a spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing. The words I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. So the word of God is so powerful. Why? Because the spirit's involved and the Bible says life is involved. But he tells us here, the flesh profiteth nothing. It's just like Jesus said in John uh, chapter 15, verse 5, without me you can do nothing. I mean, it's a powerful verse. You can't do anything without God. That doesn't mean you can't you know, wash your hair or brush your teeth or cook or whatever the thing is. That's fine. But it's not going to be profitable without the Lord. And here in verse 63, he says, the flesh profiteth nothing. So think about a person giving their whole life to their career, to whatever it may be, and yet they die without Christ, it profited nothing. Right. There's no profit to it. So, again, the, the Bible teaches the flesh profit nothing. Our greatest enemy uh, is our flesh itself. So let's go to Romans chapter 7, please. Romans chapter 7. And uh, notice... A couple of verses here. Verse 17, of chapter 7. Now there is, now then is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. For to be for the will is present with me, 
but how to perform that which is good, I find not. Now, this is Paul writing to us as an uh, older Christian. And he tells us, in me, in my flesh, it's both no good thing. Now, we can say that to people, oh, you're so talented, you, you look nice, you're handsome, you're, you're pretty, uh, you know, that's a nice outfit, you're a good cook, you're you know, a good worker, whatever the thing may be. But really, when we get down to the bottom line, in me, that is in my flesh, dwelt no good thing. There's nothing good about me. And you may say, well, preacher, hold on a second. A lot of people said things about me that are really good. Okay. We, we understand that. But the Bible also says there's none that do with good, no, not one. There's no way that people are good enough to get to heaven. So, and then the Bible says in me, that is in my flesh, dwelt no good thing. There's nothing good about me. You know, so the, the idea is that, you know, we're, we're going to die without Christ if we're not saved. So God's word commands us to give no place to the devil. That's a good command. And we're not to give a place to the devil. So think about this. Think about our flesh, our finances, our faith, our family, our friends. Uh, you know, back in the day, a salesman would go door to door. And uh, they knock on a door, and the woman most time were home, and so the, she would answer the door, and the, the man would try to place his foot within the door. And that's exactly what the devil does. He, he's going to find a, a beach front, or a beach, beach, beachhead, rather, <laughs> and, uh, you know, he'll try to get involved and try to get in your life and uh, he's not going to help you. He's going to hinder you. So you've got to be wise. Don't give place to the devil. Don't allow the devil to have a place in your life. Notice, if you would, chapter 12 of Matthew, chapter 12. And we pick up here in verse 43. And the Bible says in verse 43... When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places, seeking rest, and findeth none. Then he saith, I will return unto my house from whence I came out. And when he is come, he findeth it empty, swept, and garnished. Then goeth he and taketh the, uh, with him seven other spirits more wicked than himself. And they enter in and dwell there, and the last state of that man is worse than the first. Even so shall, uh, uh, shall it be also unto this wicked generation. So the man goes out from a place, he's cleaned and cleansed, and then he goes back to where he used to be, and he he's now has seven more spirits, more wicked than what he once was. And that's the work of the devil. So there's lots of things that you know can we can say is is a reason. The beachhead, the flesh, is where Satan wants to settle. And if he has uh, control of the flesh, he will control the soul, our emotions, our thinking. He'll control the spirit, our relationship to God. So we've got to avoid different things that are going to allow the devil to have a place in our life. So uh, you think about, uh, you know, saved cannot be demon-possessed, we know that, but we can be oppressed. And Satan wants to control our minds, our mouth, our, our members, and our manner of life. The devil tempts us through the sight. So think about adultery, covetousness, pornography. You know, Job 31, 1, the Bible said, I made a covenant with my eyes not to behold a maid. So you think about wrong TV, videos, DVDs. Uh, think about sound. Think about music or off-color jokes. Uh, programs. Think about our taste, eating, gluttony, 
the Bible speaks about uh, dead food, uh, unhealthy, sugar, not feeling well, etc. Has to do with our taste. Lots of things we put in our body is really not good for us. And then think about touch. It's attached to uh, emotions. And so we've got to be very careful with our touch, our smell. And think about uh, Proverbs chapter 7 and verse 17. Let's turn there, please. And the Bible says in verse 17, I have uh, perfumed my bed with myrrh, aloes, and, and cinnamon. Come and let's take our fill of love until morning and let us solace ourselves with love. For the good man is not at home, he has gone on a long journey. So this is the adulteress, and she's seeking uh, people that she can bring, well, the Bible says the, the the door of hell is right there. And so there's certain smells, uh, maybe uh, uh, something that, you know, will attract you or, uh, uh, you know, pull you in a certain direction because of, of a, a perfume that someone wears or the temptations. And what is Satan's purpose? He, he, he's, he's our enemy. He wants us to be addicted to snares and weights and sins. So think about what, what Satan does. Uh, again, uh, uh, there's adulation. He wants us to worship. Who he wants us to worship? He wants to be worshipped. Or idols. And think about apathy, indifference. You know, it's not going to matter. I'm, I'm going to go to hell. I'm not going to be saved. And that's your choice. It's whosoever will. And so what's the cure? First of all, it's crucifying your flesh. And that's a, that's a subject that could be preached on for, you know, services of crucifying the flesh. It's not easy, but we have to do it. You have to, just as Jesus hung on a cross and was crucified, we have to do the same thing. Not to hang on a cross, but rather crucify our lives, mortify the deeds of the flesh. And, and that's what God requires. And uh, he tells in Galatians 2, verse 20, I'm crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So Paul wanted to be crucified in the same way as Christ, but he's speaking about it spiritually. And then again, the Bible speaks about obeying the Spirit, the Word, and not your flesh. And that's not easy, but it must be done. And only a converted person can do that. Uh, the lost can try, but the, it's always going to burn out. So we have to learn to submit ourselves to God's word. The Bible says it, that settles it. And uh, then we see our defense. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 9, please. 1 Corinthians chapter 9. I'm sorry. And notice, if you would, verse 27. And the Bible says in verse 27, but I keep unto my body and bring it into subjection, lest that any means when I have preached to others, I myself should be cast away. So Paul was very conscientious about this. He said, I keep under my body and bring it into what? Subjection. And that's what we got to do. So the Bible teaches that that's one of our defenses. It's to bring our body into subjection. And be not ignorant of his devices. Uh, think about not only defense, but defiance. People that say, that, I don't care, I'm going to have it, and no one's going to say anything to me. That's not wise. Uh, defiance. And then the Bible teaches we've got to deny ourselves. 
you got to, you know, say no. And you got to put your brakes on. And uh, you got to allow not your, your will to be accomplished, but God's will. And then, uh, you know, denying the flesh. And this leads to uh, uh, dominating the, the flesh. So let's turn to Galatians chapter 5, please. And uh, we'll pick up here in verse 17. And uh, follow along with me, if you would. Verse 16 says, For this I say, walk in the Spirit. You shall not fulfill us the flesh. That's a powerful verse. Walk in the Spirit. He says, For the flesh lusteth against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary, the one to another, to the, I'm sorry, one, one to the other, so that you cannot do the things that you would. So that's where the, the battle is, verse 17. And God tells us that the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other. So what's the key? As I say, walk in the spirit. And, uh, and uh, you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So I think that's very important that we, we practice walking in the spirit. And it's not easy. Because it's things we like to do. It's things we want to do. Our flesh yearns to do. But you're only hurting the cause of Christ. You're hurting yourself because you'll reap what you sow. And uh, this is the key. So walk in the Spirit. Why? The flesh lusts against the Spirit, Spirit against the flesh. And the Bible says these things, uh, you know, uh, a contrary one to another. So that's not the way to live, but rather walk in the Spirit. So that's a, a good thought. I trust that uh, has, God's going to have his will in your life. And let's stand uh, and close in prayer. Father, thank you so much for this time. Thank you, Lord, for your blessing upon the message. And Father, help us to be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. And Father, I pray, Lord, for your blessing upon my life, upon our church's life, and help us to do your will concerning this matter. Help us be discerning. Help us be uh, wise and empowered by the Spirit to live in the Spirit, to walk in the Spirit, and not uh, give in to the flesh. I pray you bless this invitation. pray you have your will in it. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, heads about, eyes.